Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Labor supports this bill and the amendments, and the reasons why have been ably expressed by my colleagues in this House this morning. And I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Jason Clare, the member for Blacksland, for the work that he has done and the consideration and consultation involved in dealing with this very important issue. Serious issues still exist with the CPTPP, and Labor has committed to dealing with these issues should we have the privilege of forming government. Trade agreements these days have become far more complicated than early agreements that focused on tariffs as the main trade barriers. They are now complex, deeply detailed documents that have become more about the rules of trade and creating more barriers in some ways to trade than merely breaking down tariffs. Whilst I recognise the need to engage with global markets on trade and that international trade is vital to our future and economy, there needs to be very deep vigilance in a transparent and accountable way of what these trade agreements actually contain. They need to be accountable to those in this country who stand to be affected, either positively or negatively. We all seem to understand that there are winners and losers in these processes. They need to be accountable in a way that allows all stakeholders, businesses, farmers, workers and their unions, public service providers, civil society, all to be consulted. Because trade agreements should have at the heart of their intent not only the protection of profits and business interests, but the intent to raise living standards for all people of all the nations involved in these agreements. I note that the CPTPP has a labour clause, and this has been hailed as a great advancement in these agreements. And whilst, yes, it is good to have a labour chapter, the labour chapter that is in this agreement has very few teeth. It does not refer to any of the ILO conventions. There are very few enforcements for violations of any of these clauses and these things that are necessary, supposedly, to support and protect workers' rights. For example, there's no violation for, enforced, for uh, penalties for violations of enforced labour or child labour. And it merely recognises the goal of eliminating forced labour. We can use these agreements to improve the lot of everybody involved, of all citizens, if we are prepared to negotiate openly and transparently and give such things as labour chapters real teeth. And closer to home, it should mean these agreements should show that they do not encroach on the aspects of society that are held dearly and valued by our communities. Because you see, many trade agreements have come to do just that, encroach on parts of the economy that are vital to our well-being. They've been come to encroach on the realm of governments in making their own laws and decisions in the best interests of their citizens giving special rights to corporations through ISDS clauses. They encroach on the rights to access and deliver state-run essential services like health care, education and water. They encroach on the delicate and important management by governments of national immigration policy. They encroach on the ability of governments to properly and carefully regulate their labour markets and the skills standards of our professional workers. They encroach on our sovereign rights to determine how we protect our environment. They encroach on the need to determine Indigenous rights in things like land rights for First Nations peoples. These things should not happen. Our concerns with the CPTPP go to many of these issues, and I am pleased, Deputy Speaker, that a Labor government will address the harmful aspects of trade negotiations by introducing new rules of trade negotiations generally and by dealing with some of the more harmful aspects of this particular agreement. Let's take, for example, the ISDS. Uh, this agreement includes an investor state dispute settlement provision, which gives foreign corporations the ability to sue the Australian government. These provisions have been wound back, of course, from those by the original TPP, but they are still there. For example, Australia has been sued under one of these agreements in a previous trade agreement for our plain packaging on cigarettes. In other countries, very poor countries like El Salvador, those governments have been sued by corporations over mining interests. Countries that can ill afford the long, tedious and expensive court cases that unfold. Court cases that are held 
in courts that are not necessarily run by the rule of law. Labor and the broader labor movement will oppose the inclusion of ISDS provisions in trade agreements, and a shortened Labor government will not sign agreements that include these provisions, and they will negotiate to remove these provisions from agreements where they have been included by the Liberals. We know that we can do this because a precedent has been set by the New Zealand government under the Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern. Labor market testing is another area of contention and concern with this agreement. It waives labor market testing for contractual service providers, suppliers for six countries, Canada, Peru, Mexico, Brunei, Malaysia and Vietnam. Labor market testing is incredibly important. It means that local, labor, local workers can have access to jobs before those of overseas workers who we know, unfortunately, are relentlessly um, treated with uh, less rights and uh, have concerning um, conditions of employment. They undermine local conditions because they are exploited. They get paid often, as we have heard so often in the media and right around this country. They are exploited through being underpaid and through what can often be termed modern slavery conditions. A shortened Labor government will not sign trade agreements that waive labour market testing for contractual service providers. And we are committed to negotiating to reinstate labour market testing for contractual service providers and all countries where the Liberal government has agreed to waive it. Independent economic modelling is another issue that is incredibly important, and I note uh, the member for Macquarie focused on this in her presentation. Despite calls from business and recommendations from various parliamentary inquiries, like the Harper Review and the Productivity Commission, the government has refused to commission independent economic modelling for this agreement. We know broadly from the Productivity Commission that these sorts of agreements at best have very modest or small benefits to Australia and at worst actually have negative effects. A shortened Labor government will commit to conducting independent economic modelling for all trade agreements before they are signed. Some members of the Labor movement have raised serious concerns that the agreement will waive the skills assessment requirement of Australia's immigration system. A shortened Labor government will enforce mandatory skills testing requirements in this agreement and not waive them in future agreements it signs. Mandatory skills testing is important to maintain the standards and safety of Australian citizens, and trade agreements should not trade things like this away. And lastly, on the issue of accountability and transparency, it is important that all stakeholders know what is being negotiated. As I said earlier, we have a right to know where we fit into a category. Are we a winner or are we a loser? Is there any way that we can consult and improve uh, the outcome for many of us in this country when it comes to negotiating these agreements? I'm pleased to say that a Labor government will legislate to create an accredited trade advisors program where industry, union, civil society groups can provide real-time feedback on the draft trade agreements during negotiations and a Labor government will strengthen the role of the parliament in trade negotiations by increasing the participation of the Joint Standing Committee on Treaties, or JSCOT, by providing the government statement of objectives for negotiation for consideration and feedback and giving JSCOT briefings at the end of each round of negotiations. I am pleased that a Labor government will change the rules of trade negotiation, and these new rules will actually mean, I believe, that Australia will benefit better, will have better benefits from international global agreements, which, as I said, should benefit everybody and should raise the living standards of all concerned. Thank you. I thank